last week unfortunately we could not like really do anything because i was unavailable then but um this week there's like a lot to cover so let's see how far we can go on shms Cree. Uh, let's see how far we can go so basically i'm going to be trying to like replicate um, this not replicate like build it from scratch again because replicate will mean like i didn't do myself in the first place but yeah i'm going to like build it from scratch and you will see like the process around it and i will show how i was able to like achieve every single one of these things both including this um the spinning globe behind the guy it's actually a 3d asset that i made myself inside of spline so you're going to see how easy it is to actually make stuff um like this then the other interactions for example you can see once i hover over this particular bento section basically if, in case you didn't know like this kind of design where you have sections sections boxes section boxes is called bento style of design i mean it's just a it's it's basically an apple i mean apple is one like that really popularized them this um, method of um, stacking the design to as a means of presentation but basically that's by the wayside so it's called bento design in case you want to like see more of it just search for bento design style and probably find stuff like this as well so basically once i over, over, a, particular, over a particular section you see like how the text goes up and then um this um what do you call it this uh, thing also fills up and then the arrow also changes so all those small small things are just uh, uh things that like adds to the interactivity and the um should i say the enjoyability of your website for users or for designers because i don't feel like typical users actually like appreciate these things too much i feel like it's for fellow designers and fellow people that are into uh, that are deep into that that techniques that are really like value all these like small small micro interactions so i mean it's worth it really it's really worth um, putting the efforts to like uh, 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 drill down to the details and get all these things right so yeah i'm going to be showing all of that how i was able to achieve that so is there anything so in case you don't know like i actually like upload all the videos old videos in, on into like youtube so you can go on youtube and search for let me show victor let me show victor and then you'll find uh, what's it called all the older videos um there so in case you don't have it let me just drop the link in the chat so you can find older videos and also this video as well i'm going to like i'm recording currently recording it so you can also still go back and choose to watch it again and follow along with them um, what um we're trying to do here so without much ado let's get to work let's get to work let's get to work so let me before, before that let me even see let me show how it actually like comes into play let's see how far we can go for this and so basically once oh boy it's not working the way it should uh, okay. okay so basically once the loading state it's basically empty and then once you click on it you see that this line is coming to this line is just like come to divide the screen and then everything fits into you and the whole thing just plays into so it's just a really nice thing that i, I thought so I, I could add to it so let's start with the globe thing first this globe thing let me change my screen i actually hate that mode e4 so um the globe thing it was done in spline in case you don't know spline like it's a 3d tool it's a 3d tool but then it's like figma for 3d it's as simple as like how figma is which is why is actually approachable for fellow designers so you can get started by downloading the app goodspline.com or you can use it online i think i can even search for it spline or design yeah spline or design yeah so let me drop the link in chat in case you are not familiar with it. spline's game so spline the design you can just start using it on the web just like you do figma or you can actually download the app so i currently have the app installed and i'll be using that right okay so yeah so it was done in spline and I'm going to like show the process in a moment. Where is it? Work, work. Oh boy, it's frozen. Okay, you know what? Let's just get started. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to create a new file. So to create a new file, just come here at the top, and then you see this plus. Just press plus, and that's basically. There's also like a new file button there um, that I missed out on somewhere. So new file button is also. Can stop telling me to update. Oh god. New file button is also here in case you're looking for it it's also okay you can just press it and you create a new file so let's name our file although typically i don't know my name my files but then for the sake of this design tutorial i have too many on on, on, on titles so let me name it uh, rename to uh, globe okay so globe is done and i'm going to basically what i'm going to do is just to like add a texture like a line texture to so I call it texture, a material on, on spline called material. I'm going to be adding like a, <clears throat> an image of all these lines. So this line you're seeing is actually an image I added to like a sphere. 
and then the spline just did the rest and then i just added like what's equal rotation and all of that so let's see how we can actually do that how that can be achieved so later delete this one typically I, there's a i think there's a box added you can delete it and that's get started so to get started you add your own make the background first of all make the background white click on the empty space and i see where it's within within bg color so click there and then type white the, sorry type ff six times f six times f f f f f f yep so it changes the background um, color you can just click on the color here and slide and slide around so let's slide to white i'm using white because i actually want the background of my this is a gif this is a gif this um what's it called globe is here it's a gif so it has a white background because the background my design is white i am choosing to like use um, a <coughs> i am choosing to um use a what do you call it use a white um, design sorry white background for my stuff so <coughs> yeah that's why i'm changing background to white <coughs> if i was using black for my design i'd probably change it black as well because i can't export with without getting some of the background in the way which is why i'm doing a whole background thing so that's the side you first of all add your what do you call it add your um sphere so add your sphere just add a sphere anyway and then i think let's just blow up the size because i want it to like be big in relate relate relation to like the default camera this is the default camera view so i want the um, sphere to be big in relation to the camera i can actually zoom in and do what i want to do but then i every time i reset my camera to go back to being small which is something i don't which is a hassle i personally don't want to do with so what i want i can do to do that is just to increase the scale of my sphere you can just increase the scale of the x-axis to five increase the y-axis to five sorry to five the z-axis to five as well so you have like a sphere that's big in relation to the default command so anytime i what's it called reset my camera it's also going it's always going to be big in relation to the default um, camera so that's basically why i'm doing the, that so the next thing i want to do is to turn off the lighting because by default there's a lighting which makes it actually feel like volumetric I don't want to use confusing words, which makes it feel like 3D because of the whole lighting thing. It makes it feel like 3D. You can turn around and then you can see that oh, it um, it has like a this uh, volume to it. So let me reset my camera again. So that's why I'm turning off lighting. I actually want it to look flat, like a 2D. Like it, this feels like 2D. You don't really know that it's it's a 3D asset because it feels like 2D. There's no volume to it. There's no uh, what's it called depth to the thing, which is why I'm actually trying to turn off the lighting here. So let me switch this tabs okay so turn off the lighting just to remove that um, 3d if you want something 3d 3d is good and fine you can turn it on so the next thing i want to do is also like add an image add a what's it called add an image layer so to do that just press plus here and then you have these options like a color what's it called a color material will be added by default but what you want to do is to change that color to image so click on the color the drop down beside the color and then look for image amongst all these options okay image is the, is the first one so select it and then you have like this default uh, transparent image and background it means you can now add your image so once you have this you it means there's no image added and then you can add your image so if you click click on the image icon like this image icon here you can now upload your image you can choose from this one so to make a 3d earth is kind of really easy here just go and select like a 3d earth um, uh, image here and then you have it boom you have your 3d earth done already so it's as easy as that it, it's to do like this kind of thing in spline but what i want to do now is like what's it called this group that has like lines lines so i want to create my own texture i want to create my own texture so typically what you have if you can see here it's like a flat image of the earth like an expanded image of the earth and then the spline thing just like wraps it around like this fair and then you have like this 3d looking earth so that's basically what i want to, want to try and do you want to create our own texture made from lines so if you can see here you can see like this lines texture i actually have here that's what i use i exported as a, an image and then i added into spline so here is where you, how to do this basically how i do it is actually by dropping a, a image and sorry an image with a specific dimension so draw a frame in figma go to figma or any tool you actually use I, I i would suggest you use like a what do you call it a vector tool for example uh illustrator or any other tool like illustrator corel draw and the rest because it just like gives you like more crisp um, uh, quality and everything so what i want to do is to have um it's give it a specific dimension so 2048 by 1024 cool so just keep those direction di uh, dimensions in mind i'm going to make it with 2048 yeah 2048 and then make the height 1024 cool so i 
I actually don't have like the perfect explanation of why I'm doing this, but because the default, um, I think the default um, texture I downloaded was this dimension, so I just continued to use it like that. So I don't want to like mess the thing up. The first dimension, um, what's it called? The first um, texture I downloaded of Planet Mars had this um, exact same dimension. So I'm just choosing to go with that as well because I don't want any one key looking uh, results. So with that out of the way, you can now add your line. So just create a line, draw a line, hold shift while drawing the line just to make like a very straight one. Any, it can be any length really, but then you really want to make it like the length of the frame. Yes, of the frame, of the mother frame you're creating. So hold shift and while making, so it's perfectly straight and then make sure it's touching the edges of the of the frame and then let's like increase the uh, what's it called the thickness so the thickness well, let's make it like four let's make it like four so four is cool i think let's see this one i think this is this is five but four is fine four is fine four is fine so what you want to do is duplicate another one if you are familiar with auto layout it will like just save you like a lot of stress so what you want to do is just mark both of them and then auto layout them which is shift a to auto layout the two items inside. The next thing you want to do is to now make this, okay, you want to uh, move this uh, frame to the top and then drag, like you want to fix, you want to fix the, uh, what's it called, the dimensions. You don't want to like, you don't want to leave it to fit to the side. You have to like stretch it. So what you want to do is like increase the height to be the same height as the, what's it called, as the fr frame and then increase the width as well to be the same like the height and which should just be the same basically so you can see here it's changed to fixed and fixed the width is fixed the height is fixed and then next thing you want to do is to um while still selecting that let's call it let's call the frames let's call the auto frame lines let's call it vertical lines because we're still going to have a horizontal one sorry vertical horizontal rather that thing really confuses me a lot horizontal so horizontal lines and um you want to do uh what do you call it you want to you don't want to leave, give any space you want to make the spacing like actually uh, you want to make the spacing auto. So what you want to do is just like this spacing here. You can come here and type auto there, or type zero. I think if you type okay, if you type zero, I think it will space it auto. So what it will do basically is just separate the two lines uh, across to sh share the items inside across the what's it called inside of the um, area that the auto layout is taking. So now you have one line at the top. Let's see, you have one line at the top, and then you have one because it's two lines, so it's separating them. So you want to do click on select the lines and then duplicate it just duplicate it auto layout is just going to do the rest so for the vert for the horizontal lines i want to have like how many i think one two three four five six cool so have six lines inside of the auto layout group the horizontal auto layout, auto layout group one two three four five six okay so i need a sixth one and with that i have my what's it called horizontal lines done the next thing is for the vertical ones i just can just duplicate duplicate the auto layouts or the uh, horizontal lines and then call it vertical lines okay and then i can now like turn up i can now spin it around that uh, um, 90 degree and then i can now constrain like mess around with the height and width again to make it like what's it called to make it um, fixed so fix the height uh in relation to the frame and then so you can see the auto layout is just spacing like spacing the um, items out for me because I set it to auto. I set, set the spacing to auto. So if you're not familiar with that auto layout thing, it will be good like to be great for you to like actually just get familiar with it. So the next thing I want to do is to now press enter to select all the lines out of the vertical groups because you can see that it's too long and it's like breaking the bounds of the um, what's it called the main frame. Let's call it main frame or let's let's call it texture. I guess texture. Okay. So I want to select the vertical lines, click on them, and then set the what's it called, set the height and width to fill, fill, yeah, fill. So fill just basically just constrains like constrains the height of the um, lines to fill the height of the frame available frame which is set to fixed. So that's basically it. So what you want to do? You want to have like how many? I think you want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to have eight. You can have any number, any number of lines inside of it. That's good and fine. But I'm using eight because eight will actually like give you this particular, this look, this particular look. Yours may, if you want to use like something smaller, it may, be, it may look more scanty. Or if you want to use something more than eight, maybe more than that. So I want to have eight inside of it. So one, okay, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not counting this first one because for some reason, if I were to export like this, it's going to 
the texture is just, just going to merge it's going to merge this one and this one it's just going to look one kind so what i want to do is this first line here i want to reduce the opacity on it so it's invisible so if you can see the one i did first you can see that there's no line here it's actually there but then i turned the opacity down because if i were to export and add, add to the image it's just going to like merge this first line and the last line this and one line in the design is just going to look thicker than the others and i don't really like the look so i want to like turn down the opacity of the first one but you can add yours like that and see the results to know what i'm talking about so i want to just do the same thing one two three four five six seven okay remain one okay so like that i have the same thing set up so what i want to do now is i want to turn down the i want to also remove the fill so turn off the fill you might turn on the fill i think it will, it's not really do anything it won't really do any damage but then i personally prefer to turn off um, the fill and then once you have this like this you have your texture set up so you can all your material let's call it material since that's the language that's prime uses uses material okay so you can now export this so export and then make sure you're exporting like in a high um in a high in high quality so to do that this by the default it's set, it's set to 1x export quality is set to 1x so you can turn it up to anything you can set, turn it up to 20x really but then let's do as uh, i think 8x works fine so 8x so eight times you're going to like blow this thing up eight times and like make the quality like eight times this current quality you are seeing here or eight times this current size you're seeing here that's basically what it means so the quality is going to be higher if you use 1x the quality is just going to be low so i cannot export export material okay just give one second exporting okay that's done so now i can go back into spline i'll go back into spline let's start from scratch um start from scratch add a sphere add a sphere i want this sphere to be big in relation to the default camera so i can turn I increase the scale to five 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 so five on the x axis x axis, x -axis uh, five on the y and uh, what's it called five on the z the question in the chat Oh no, it's autopilot. Sorry, Jeff, just wait till after the class before we take questions. Thank you. Okay, so add the uh, multiple, add the sphere, and then you can turn off the lighting. Okay, let's turn on the lighting. Let's leave the lighting on so you can actually see what why I'm turning it up in the first place. So I want to add my uh, multiple image layer now. So press plus here, press plus here, and then it adds a color layer, and then you can change the color layer to image. And then now select click on this uh, multi-code image um, thing to upload your own image so you press upload image here and then see the image here this material here so select it press open let's give you one second to load up okay so you can see why i'm moving, moving the i'm turning off the lighting because lighting okay it's not lighting actually so the lighting makes it like have this um, 3d look so when i turn on turn lighting no longer has that but then there's still a color layer under under sorry <laughs> underneath the um, image layer so turn off the color layer as well and boom you have your globe so you can let me pan around let me turn around and see so hold if you're using a if you're using your trackpad you can hold option or alternate on the keyboard and then click click down and, and drag it's just going to like turn around um orbit around the object for you but if you're using mouse if you're using like an external mouse just um, click the center button center and uh, center um click button and um, hold command sorry command or control and then spin around turn around it's just going to orbit around the object so if any at any point in time where you have messed up the camera maybe like messed up the camera like this you can just press a uh, multi called reset here and it's just going to reset to the original view so you can have that original look so if you notice like the edges are not really like the edges of the chip are not really like looking good because they look it's basically transparent so there's really nothing to see on the edges so what you want to do once you turn around you're actually going to see the full thing but by default you don't like it doesn't really look good it looks the edges look like no oh point the edges look one kind so what i want to do is to add an outline to it like add, add this um, what's it called outline which you see here in this um design this design this this outline here this out, uh, outline so to do that just click on the shape and then press plus on the material section and then click on the col color and then navigate down to outline so boom you have your outline added already by default you can still go back in and i did some stuff so in case the outline looks bigger a bit thicker than the other lines that you have in the design you may want to like adjust that so the outline here i think uh with let's see into one yeah i think one or 1.5 1.5 so you can let's select the outline again so you see the width here so you can change it to one point let's change to 1.5 oh 1.5 look good i think it works i think it works 
Oh, you know what? For prosperity, you just need to to to, to let's leave that too. So yeah, you, like this, you have your your globe, your globe setup. So reset camera, and then to make it turn around, to make it spin around, if you're familiar with them, to make it spin around its own, you just for you to just click on the globe, and then press states. Add a state here. So state the state thing basically just means default states. Uh, what's it called? And uh, and uh, <coughs> new state. So in the new state, what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, what's it called rotation of the y axis so if you navigate down to rotation you're going to see the what's it called rotation on the, uh, on the x axis rotation on the y axis and the z axis so if you mess around with them you're going to see the different effects so you can see that x axis like turns it like up down but that's not what, what i want to achieve i want to achieve like this left right uh, what's it called rotation so uh what's it called i want to achieve like this left right rotation so what i'm going to do to achieve that is just to like mess with the y axis so you can see when I mess with that y axis, it actually has that effect. Z axis does something different. That's not what you want. So, X on the y axis, I'm just going to like change the rotation here to minus 360. Okay. So when I play it, nothing is really going to happen because I've not added like a trigger for it. I've added the states. I've created the base state and the default state. But then I've not added the trigger that triggers the base state to move to the default state. So to add that, to add a trigger, you go to events and then you see the plus there. So once you see the plus there, select the object. Okay press plus on the event and then select them um, transition and then click on the tra so transition it's going to like put in, in brackets it's going to put the name of the object that you have selected so click down to open it to open more details about it so here now is where you can see this by default it's going to turn if i play it now it's going to turn but you can see that it's turning too fast like it's turning too fast and it also doesn't like continue turn continuously so that's why i'm opening settings to actually mess around with the stuff here so to do that i can go into this section first change it from transition from ease out in ease in to linear so select the click on the ease out ease out ease in and then you can see a drop down that shows there so you can select ease in ease out select linear so linear makes you like just turn like in a linear fashion <laughs> in a linear fashion basically that's what and then the time for the time the time is too it's too small so you need to turn like increase the time up like a lot so let's do 15 and see okay so 15 so it's going to work now however i think 15 is too slow however the issue i'm going to have with this particular one so let's see, we drop the time down to 10. so the issue i'm going to have with this particular one 10 i think 10 works fine i guess works fine so the issue i'm going to have with this is that once it gets to once it finishes turning it doesn't like continue turning i i can't really wait for 10 seconds for it to finish turning but then once it finishes turning it doesn't like do any other thing so what i want to do so you can see that's actually stopped and that's the end so what you want to do, you want to like continue continue turning. So what you must do to do that is to come to this um, loop section. See the loop section here? Click on it and then press infinite. So set the loop to infinite so you can loop infinitely. But then the issue it's going to have is that for some reason it's not going to... Well, it's going to work really. It's going to work. So set it to infinite and basically that's all. That's all you need to do to get it to like turn like continuously, 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 continuously. Um, I am not messing with this cycle because... Um, it's on for, for now i don't really need it because the thing is actually doing a full rot rotation it's doing a full rotation so i don't need to like mess with any other thing here to get it to work perfectly because uh if i was not doing full rotation i would have to like maybe make some tweaks but full rotation is fine uh so that's why infinite works good and every other thing is set to go so like this it's just going to be turning like permanently like once it gets to if uh, what's it called to its resting state it's going to start again and continue turning like that but i see a problem that i don't want it's turning to the left yeah i want it to actually turn to the right to the right so what i can do to solve that is just to come here to the y section rotation section which is on the new state so uh, take note there's a base state there's a new state so in the new state the y axis is set to minus 360. what i want to do is just to remove the minus minus to make it turn the other way so just to make it turn the other way so you can see it's turning to the right now and that's this is what i want to actually achieve so what i can do to export it by default i can actually export as a gif on I can export as a gif here on uh, this um what do you call it on this tool on spline i can actually export a gif you can set the option here to gif or whatnot but i personally prefer using my own uh, recorder screen recorder to export so if you want to export from spline go down fine but me personally what i do i use a mac so i use i use a mac even though i was using like a windows or when i was using windows i'll use my windows in built recorder so to do that i just press command shift 5 on windows i think there's an option alt shift g or so i don't really like forgotten i forgot the option but basically it pulls up like this um, inbuilt screen recorder for you and then you can mess around with the size with the dimension rather so let me play first no cancel okay
Okay, where I don't really want to do that is um on this screen. Oh, so, so, so. okay. So I want to pull up my screen recorder here, and then I want to like size it to just fit the section I want to have the what's it called thin frame. So I can just like make it like a square, sort of sort of like a square. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, just centralize this particular thing in the in the middle, and that's basically it. So you can press record. So what I do personally, once I press record, I make I cancel the animation and then make it start from the beginning again. Start from the beginning again and centralize it. I think it's not really centralized. Okay, let me centralize it here first. Let me try to centralize it here because I don't want to have troubles while trying to use my design. So centralized and then I just let it play for like 10 seconds. So let's just try and like let's just try and see how it works for. So 10 seconds basically is just the time it takes for it to like do a full rotation. I think what I should have done is actually make it stop um, rotating rotate because now I can't tell where, it, where 10 seconds stops. But that's totally fine. So when I am, I'm, I'm satisfied with it, so good and fine. I can just stop recording. I think it has gotten to 10 seconds. So I can stop recording and press stop recording. So Mark, in case you don't know how to record on your on your, on your your machine, just go and like search for the um, button online and you find it. So that's that. So what I do personally again to get the section I want is just to trim it. So I can actually I can just trim it here. So I think this is where it starts from. So I can trim it. Trim it from here, from the beginning. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's not, let's not, let's um, what's it called? Let me not um, stress perfection here today. So let me just get here. Okay, let me get here. I said, okay. okay. Yeah, I think that this is fine. So this is like a good amount. This is a good chunk of, of the good part. I don't think I, I inter interfere with the animation here. So that's basically it. So one, I'm, once I'm, I'm done trimming, I can press done. That's the end. So all these things you can do there, regardless of if you're using a Mac or Windows, you can do all these things. Do this recording on your PC. Like I said, but then if it's too much trouble for you, good and fine, you can use Splines, Inbuilt, Exporter. But then me personally, I always like have some, it's always finicky for me. But then if it's not finicky for you, good and fine. So that's that. Once I've recorded it, typically I can't use a video. I, you can actually use a video in Figma, but then I don't have pro access. This is not a pro account. And the way I teach, I try, try to like use um, a free stuff that anyone can actually use. I don't want to like use any stuff that's tied behind them. Pay walls. So to do a um, multiple, to be able to like use, if you had, have a pro account, you can use actually use that video in your, your design. For me, I don't use the pro account, so I'm going to use like convert it to a GIF because that's the only way you can actually get into what's it called things that move into Figma. So if you're using a free account rather, so I'm going to convert to a GIF. To do that, just go to I'm going to search for GIF scheme. I have this um, tool GIF scheme. Okay. So I think someone said it's available for Mac, for Mac, for Windows as well. So you can search for a GIF scheme. It's available and it's free on Mac. So I don't know if it's free on Windows as well. Can I just convert my recording into a GIF? You can set it, do the settings here. I think you can reduce the percentage just to get the size like down a bit. You can reduce the percentage to like let's say 80 percent. Turn the FPS down or up. But me personally, I like high FPS because it means it's just going to move smoother. So uh, quality good and fine. All these other options good and fine. You can just like mess around with them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's convert. So it's going to convert into a, okay, no. <laughs> it's going to convert into a GIF. I uh, just give it a few a few seconds. So while that is working on its own, let's quickly get the design. So the design the design aspect I'm sorting out. So basically, the design is typically simple. It's really simple. It's actually the interactive part that that there's a bit of um, work to be done. So let's just get the design set up. So I create a frame. To create a frame, make it um. I'm going to create add a desktop frame rather. So add desktop. So add desktop, which is 1440 by 1024. However, I'm going to, I'm not going, I don't want to go use 2024. I want to use 810 for the height because it's going to make this particular 1440 in width frame. It's going to make the frame a, what do you call it? It's going to make it um, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I prefer 16 by 9 aspect ratio because it just looks good for presentation purposes. So I'm going to just make the, what's it called, height, what's it called, 810. So for the sake of posterity, I'm still going to show what this actually means. So. I'm going to lock the resolution. I've changed the height to 810 now, and the width is 1440. So if I were to drop the height down to 9 with the resolution locked, you're going to see that the height width is going to drop to 16, which is the whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio thing. So if you're familiar with aspect ratio, there's a 16 by 9, one called 16 by 9, and it's basically the um, standard aspect ratio for wide, for wide, for wide screen or for TVs and for computers and all of that but then my mind i think mac is 16 by 10 also i don't really know but then 16 by 9 looks good and it's, i just prefer it that's basically why i'm going for it so 40 40 by 80 10 and end of the um, story so the next thing is just to like add your you can create any uh um any uh what do you call it any 
Navba, but me, I want to just use my own, own Navba. Navba is not really hard now, so I don't want to like spend too much time like doing it. So create a Navba, and then in the Navba, the only unique thing you're going to do is to add like a. So this is Navba. It has like the logo here. It has like all the all the text here. So I'm using capital letter always through, and I'm using um, my font is uh, Noe Montreal. I think I've shared it before. Noe Montreal is free. Just go on. Sorry, it's not free, but then you can get like a free version on um, Panagram panagram.com i think just i'm I, i'm see, I come let me see if i can get that thing okay we montreal font so it's a font by panagram panagram and you can get it for free like at the version for free sure but um you still have to like pay for the actual copy but this is i'm using for design purposes for personal purposes there's really no need so i've dropped the link in the chat in case you want to get it to use so our file is also done in the gift key i can press save us press save us and then save it as a what's it called gloop let's call it gloop globe gif okay so yeah it's that gif has been saved my globe gif has been saved and i can use it my design when i'm ready for to use it so i have my what's it called my nava setup the only and the heights just keep in mind the height is um 80 and the height i'm setting the height of nava to 80 and then the next thing i want to do is just to like add a a border radius sorry a border to it yeah so add a stroke to the border so to do that I just press plus on the stroke and then typically it's going to like add stroke around it but then i only want it at the bottom I only want it at the bottom so I can just set it from here to show only at the bottom of it so once you have that done you can now create like the other sections create other sections basically i think what i did i wasn't really like too i wasn't too uh what do you call it to uh forgotten the words <laughs> forgotten the word i'm really sorry i wasn't too particular about the dimensions but basically i just create a square first so let's create a square let's call it let's make a square like 40 400 let me check which one was the size of the one i'm using here just so i can still have something so let's do 460 here instead so let's do 460 for a square for a square okay 416 so make it create a square for 460 by 460 let's just add like what's it called let's add a fill so you can see it's red so this section is going to be where i drop it the go and um, the globe so you can see in the design the globe is in zone square there and then you have this stuff like this um, text coming up on the section so that's what i'm trying to like create here so i'm going to have the um uh, where is it stop interrupting i mean okay yeah so i'm going to have this square for it's 460 by 460 and then i'm going to just create drag drag it out and create a multi call call it um i'm going to call this i'm going to call this one um uh, uh let's call it one section one let's call it um let's call it section one section let's call it section let's just call it section section let's not let's not think too much about the names i'm only using names because I'm, this is history but they typically i typically don't do my yeah i don't do my layers so i'm going to create this one and then i'm going to drag this one out make it um just to make it like take the remain remainder of the what's it called actually i'm trying not to use auto layouts because that may get a bit tricky for people that are not familiar with it so i don't use to let me just call this one let me make this one blue so you can see the difference so uh then i'm going to like have the bottom part so the bottom part is just going to be like so this square the only the only thing i defined was the square was the dimension of the square and then i just use this um, what's it called use this one to fill the rest of the available space that's what i did so uh, the width is typically 980 if you get the width the width is typically 90. so the next thing i want to do is to group them together not group them don't group please try not to use groups inside of figma it's it's really terrible groups groups mess your work except in unique cases where groups actually are helpful but most times i don't use frames instead of groups so i'm going to select both of them like this blue and red one and then i'm going to uh what's it called frame selection again so i'm going to call this one a top I'm just going to call it top so this section of this section this a frame of this group of two frames i'm going to call this um section um, top i'm going to draw down and down so to do that before i even do that i think i want to also add a what i want to do now is i want to change the colors i want to just make the colors no let me change the color first so i want to add a stroke add a stroke to the you're not going to see stroke but then it's there there's a stroke at the bottom of it there's a stroke here the bottom of it but let me set it to outside so you can see it so you can see now there's a stroke a black stroke around it so i want to also do the same thing i did for the top set it to bottom so it's only the bottom that has a stroke so that's what you want to do and then i want to change these colors i want to remove these colors now do i want to remove them now i still think i want to leave them around just so you can see what's 
exactly is going on. So I don't think I can do without Oliot. I really cannot do without Oliot. I want to just put out this um, these items, and then I want to set this one to fixed, and then set this one to fill. So this one is just going to fill the available space in case I was designing responsive and I just shrink it down. You're going to see that the blue section is just only going to the blue section is going to shrink, but then the red section is going to remain in the same because I want the red section as a square, but the blue one I want it as a like dynamic um, I dyna dyna dynamic um, frame group. So I'm going to drag it down and then I'm going to drag um, okay. Another thing I want to do is I want to set the height to fill container as well. So fill container. So I'll set the um, height of this one to fixed. And then I'll set the height of the item size to fill content so that they can fill the available space. That's what I want to do. So that's that. And uh, this now, I want this one. I want to delete this one here. Yeah. And then drag this one down, like create a duplicate of it. So hold alternate and then drag it down. That's for you and the option to duplicate. So you can, I can also, why I'm setting the height to fill content is so that I can shrink this one. I can shrink the height of this frame. And then the item size is going to like automatically adjust. So here now, what I want to do is I want to have this. I want to set the two of them to let me call this one green. Let me call this one. Let me change it green so you can see the difference. Green. Oh. Green. Yeah. Uh yellow. Yep. So I want to this green one, it's the what's it called width is set to fill container. So I want to duplicate it. I want to duplicate it and then make this one uh, let's say oh. Yeah, yeah, let's make it this red, I guess. So you can see these two are set to, set to fill container. Then this one is set to this one. I'm going to set the width to be like a what's it called to be a square. So the current height is to be a square. So this height, the, I'm going to set the height and the width to be the same thing. So 270 is the height. So let me turn this thing off. Okay, so you have two elements that are just need to fill the container basically i don't i don't really want to sweat, sweat these details too much i don't want to sweat, sweat them too much our time is really limited so i have that set up so the next thing i want to do is select all the select all the layers here and then i want to remove all the colors i want to remove the or just make it white i guess let's make it white sorry i want to make all the colors white fill so set the fill to f so yeah you can't see it now but then all the layers actually like there's this section here the section here the section here section here and section here as well that's what i'm trying to do so the next thing i think i want to do is to now start adding my content start adding my content so for the sections i want to create the sections as um components i want to create the sections as, comp as components so there's a section 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 so this section is going to be for section by the left hand side is going to be for this text that's them rotating so the first thing we have set up let's bring it into design first so we have our globe set up our globe gif done so let's just bring it to design just i'm just going to drag place it place it outside it's really big okay, let me place it outside okay place it somewhere here and then i'm just going to shrink it down shrink it down and also i'm going to control x cut it place it on my place it set up this frame by the left hand um, side you can't see it but like i said it's there so i think one thing i'm forgetting is forgetting to add the strokes okay i've added the strokes it's just that they're not showing because so i'm going to bring the strokes to be inside no, not inside, outside. Okay, but I need to uh, make the layers to bring the layers to the top so you can see the stroke. So yeah, you can see that this divider, this divider stroke. Yeah. So I also want to add a stroke to this section, a stroke. So add a stroke to this so you can show you that there's a division between the section and the section. I think that's the thing I've been missing since. So add a stroke as well here. The stroke, all the strokes are actually black and then they are one pixel. So make add it, um, make it to the right hand side. So you can see that it's just the right hand side I'm showing for the string the stroke here. So yeah, you have this um, uh, group here, and then I want to string it down a bit, I guess. And then I also want to like turn it around because this while this stretch is like is okay, like this, it's going to turn. So let me play the Figma file so you can see. So just give me one second to finish um, loading up and play. So it's going to turn because it's a GIF, it's a GIF. Or if it's a video you want to add, good and fine. So it's going to turn. Just give me a second to load up. It's going to be turning, but since the gif is like thick like the size is actually big it's going to take a while to um to start playing so typically you can actually export like high quality gif into figma i think it's going to play, play them for you because figma allows it it's just like it takes time to load so while this composition looks okay i still want to look, make it look more interesting because i feel like I've, for some reason like angled stuff just like have more interesting factors to them than stuff that like i just typically straight so that's a, a design uh, what's it called is the design thing I can't explain it, but then for some reason, angled stuff just like look better than um, what's called. Just look more interesting, not better per se. Look more interesting than stuff that are uh, straight, that are typically straight. So I want to angle it a bit, angle it by 15, minus 15 degree. And then 
it's going to turn it's just still loading up so that's that i want to also start um, adding my um inside the key i want to also create this section here this section here for the um uh, text that's scrolling so what i want to do is to drag the section i like create a duplicate of it so I, i'm creating a duplicate of it by holding out alternate and then clicking and dragging outside so i can have a version of it myself so i'm going to call this one let's call it text let's call it um hero text so this is hero text okay I've not created the, the, the text itself, but yeah, let's uh, create the text. So add the text, create um, add the text into the box and just call it like let's say creative. Um, so what I used then was creative and uh, product designer. I want you to scroll. So it, 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 it's intentional that I'm, I'm actually making the text like really long because I want you to scroll and just like have this interesting motion factor. So you can see that the, this is our own group. You can see that it's turning here. So that's that. If you have any troubles with doing that, you can always go back to your spline and get it sorted out creative um, and um, product um, designer okay so you have this done what you want to do is change the text to morganite morganite is a font i have been using for a while in my other design sessions i already have the link there but you can look for it. it's morganite it's free and it's free to download just like morganite free downloads you're going to get it so you want to make the size 400 yeah like really big and chunky <laughs> Really big and chunky, so I'm also going to make the make the uh, what's it called the letter spacing zero because Morgana actually has a really tight letter spacing, so I don't really want to like add more letter spacing to it. So for the other things, I want to also like trim. So make sure that you are trimming vertical because by default it comes with like extra text coming with extra padding. So you want to trim vertical by coming here and going going to this option cap height to baseline. So you're just going to like trim the extra top and bottom this thing to just fit the actual text itself. So that's that. And what other things do we need to do? I think the other thing is to like change the text to uh, what do you call it to? Uh, I'm trying to find a word. Change the text to. I can't mind. <laughs> change the text to stroke rather. Change the text to stroke. So I want to change the field to white to white. There's, but typically I normally remove the stroke, but then so I can like, actually click easily click the text is why I'm adding a like adding a fill. So uh, yeah, that's basically that so what you want to do now is also turn this to auto layout sorry turn this um, what's it called hero text um, um, section to auto layout because i want it to auto layout just make my life makes life easy for you makes life really really easy but then for the sake of those who may not be familiar with it let's not use auto layout so i just want to leave the text like that. have the text there so it's stretching out of frame good and fine so i want to align left so it's touching like the edge do i want to stay the edge no i actually want it to no, I want you to like have it some extra space. So I want to like move it 40 pixels away from this edge. 40 pixels away from the edge from, from the edge like this. And make sure it's centralized. So you can centralize it by going to align a center, vertical center. And that's basically it. So it's smack right in the middle of the frame. And the next thing you want to do is to create a duplicate of it. And then this duplicate of it, you click on the text and press this align center. Align horizontal center rather. So align horizontal center so that the text is in the middle here. So I don't want to have to do motion myself is why I'm doing all this stuff. So you're going to see why I'm doing that in a moment. So create a duplicate of it again and then click on the text. Oh boy. Click on the text and then press align, what's it called? Align uh, right. Yeah, so that's what you want to have. But then like I like the first like first one, you want to move it like 40 pixels away from the edge. So 40 pixels away from the edge. Let's do 60 for good measure. 60, uh, 40. 40 is okay. <laughs> But it's fine. So yeah, you want to have that. Uh, so also take note, I'm using like the italics of the italic version of the what's it called of the um, font. So you have this one where the text is aligned center, and then you have this one you have this where the text align them to the to the oh boy to the right. Yeah, to the right. So that's basically it. So once you've done this, you can just select all of them, select all the like all the uh, actual frames themselves, and then go to components and press create component set. So boom, like this, you actually actually have the motion set, set up. What you must do now is just to add them, the trigger itself. So let me just copy one of them. So you can copy any one of them. Copy this first one for good measure. Copy the first one and paste it, and Control C, and then paste it in this, in this place, in this section here. Paste it there, this section. Why? Paste it inside of the section. Make sure it's inside, inside of the layer section layer. So on the layer, it's not going inside of the section. I, I can't see. So what I'm going to do is just to drag it in the layers panel into the section. Into section uh, group, into section layer rather. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so this is section here. Section is taking like the full. Let me make it another color red, so you can see. Okay, red. 
However, I think the best the best thing I want to do really okay. Let me let me also turn off the what's it called turn off the background. So turn off the background here by just on, let's select on the other turn off the background. Let's leave the background. You know what? Let's leave the background. So now that I have that done, I want to select this stuff, select it, and then go inside of the layer and paste it. I don't want it to be shrinking. It's actually shrinking. This thing is shrinking. I don't want to shrink. But you know what's good and fine. I can actually just stretch it out just to feel. Make sure it's filling the like dimension of the of the red area, of the section area. So. In the section is red i'm going to turn the turn the color off turn the red red color off so basically you have the hero text uh, component inside of this section so let's see our uh, prototype again are you going to see i'm going to have it in a second it's going to load up oh, yeah so you have it there but it's not moving we've already created everything but it's not moving the only thing we need to do now is just to add the trigger that makes it um, move so to add the trigger you just come here okay i think what i'm doing is that i must come to the, the um, component section so these are the components for that particular thing. Any change I make here is just going to affect here as well. So I'm going to just name this uh, variant, variant two, name this variant, variant um, three, so that they don't have conflicting names in case I need to change stuff. So you can now go to process type and then just um, drag like a, a wire from here to here to the second one and then set it to after delay. After delay, let's do zero. After delay, zero. So set the after delay to zero and then set the, what's it called, set the um, uh, stuff. This stuff to smart animate. I don't really know what to call it. The trigger or the type or the trigger type. Let's call it trigger type. Set it to smart animate, and then set the uh, what you call the, the easing to linear. So I don't want any uh, easing ease out. I don't want any fancy stuff. I want it linear, just in a linear fashion. So I want to also increase the time to eight thousand, eight thousand milliseconds. That's like about eight milliseconds, eight seconds, I guess. I think it's eight seconds. I think so. So. 8,000 milliseconds because I want it to actually be slow. So depending on the speed you want, you can mess around with the with the uh, what's it called with the time. So you also want to do the same for here. Drag it to the second one and then set it to after delay and then set the delay to zero. So by default, all these other things are going to be set to the same thing that this first one set. So it's linear 8,000 milliseconds and I don't need to adjust that. So what I must do is this last one. I will now drag this last one to this first one again. So it like once it gets here, it repeats the entire sec um, cycle. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So change it from on click to after delay, and then. Um, but this one, all you want to do is you want to change the what's it called after delay this into zero. This particular one, this last one is always a special one. You must treat it specially. So you must change the um, what's it called the animation type to instant because you actually don't want to anybody to like see. It's, it's going to be a uh, what's it called junky. But then I can't. I, I I I don't think it's worth stressing too much to like get a perfect perfect transition so just set it to instant instant we don't have to set any number or anything so once it gets here it instantly jumps to once this one ends once this prototype ends it instantly jumps back to the first one then the cycle starts again that's what i'm trying to do here so let's see how it works in actual implementation so let's let me see it's supposed to work but then i need to i think i need to restart the prototype so reload tab so while that is while that is working Let's just give it one second to load up. Okay, so you can see that it's working. It's just like scrolling. So let's see what happens when it actually scrolls to the designer part. So this one is meant to just turn, like just be turning like eternally. That's basically what it does. It's a GIF, so it doesn't. You don't really have to mess around with it. So this one wants to get to designer. You can see it quickly jumps back to creative, and then you, can, you can't see it. You can't see where, where, when it happens. But then that's really the idea. So that's that for the scrolling text for that particular scrolling text so the last part is just for us we're going to stay a little bit more than 11 o'clock today but then i mean it's for good measure i don't want to have to come back to this or leave it halfway so the last thing i want to do is like to create all this interactive um this interactive um, sections here so what i must do to create this just like create the components for one of them and then we're going to use that components across board it's very very easy very very easy so that's the last section remaining so what i must do just click on one of the one of the, um, what's it called, one of all these sections here at the bottom and then just drag it down. So you can, I'm going to move this component away so yeah, I don't mess with it. Most times I actually leave them on that page, but they can leave it anywhere, really. So I want to create this section. This section is for the project, for the, um, what's it called, for the all the bottom stuff. So to do that, I must now um, add my text, add my text. So I'm going to use, oh, I need to add a text. I'm going to just call this one, um, uh, title. Let me just call it title. Title here. Okay. So I'm creating a component. That's why I'm using title here. But then you can name it anything. So title here. I'm going to drop the size. Let me check the size I'm using here. I don't want to waste too much time. Title here. Book italic 80. Okay. Okay. So 80. The font size is 80. 
and then the height so i don't really need to sorry the light space i don't really need to with that so book italic i think book italic is what i'm using as well so let's just call it title here and then uh, so drop the title here and i'm going to do a creative body of text underneath it so we're going to create a text body now so text body just going to write some random stuff and then i'm going to create a multi code i'm going to before i do that let me just like let me i'm going to change the text to um Nui montreal that means Nui montreal i, I talked about Nui montreal okay to find it and by the way if you download, download from panagram you're going to find it like you are to find any panagram text font on your, on your on your figma you have to like press pp so it always comes with a pp so i downloaded this font from Pan panagram panagram so it's going to show pp in front of it so pp Nui montreal so that's basically the text and i want to change it to um to book i think let me see what i'm using here like i said sorry we might stay over still more than 11 o'clock today because i need to like actually finish this thing i don't have to come back to it so book so but if you can't stay good and fine the what's it called the um session is going to be uploaded on youtube you can always check check for it's like tomorrow evening or so around tomorrow evening i would have uploaded it there so yeah the height is let's go back to design the font size is 20 okay font size is 20 and then minus two for the other element so font size is 20 yep and then the other element i'm um, minus two i think i minus two, minus two for the for the uh Letter spacing, letter spacing. I always do this just because I want this text to like look tighter. Let me use the word tighter. Tighter doesn't mean like tight in the sense of oh, it's jam packed, but tighter in the sense of like it just looks cohesive. That's really why I go ahead uh, to like tamper with my, my space. So, what I can do now is just select both of them and then do auto layout here. So, I'm going to call this one text. Text. Okay. So, I can now drag into this group, uh, into this group, and then I want to auto layout here. Although, Press auto layout here. The issue I have is that auto layout just messes up the side, the height. I actually want it to be the height. Do I want? Okay, do I want? The, I want the height to be like. So yeah, I want the height to be dynamic. So good and fine. Good and fine. So I want to have the height. This thing like this, and then I'm going to use auto layout here. There's no way I'm not going to use auto layout because I just have to. It helps a lot. It helps a lot with all this alignment and stuff like that. So I'm going to auto layout this thing, and then I'm going to set this what's it called? Set the width of this thing to fill container. Yep, I'm going to set to fill container. And then I'm going to just uh, set this one, set the inside element, the inside text as well, to fill container inside of the group. So I'm going to call this one section. Se okay, section, text, and then title and then body. So this one is going to be called body. <coughs> so like this, I have the body and the uh, what's it called and the, um, the title and the body sets to fill container. Then I have the um, what's it called the text, text uh, layers, text, text, mm, call it text, text. Let's call it text. Let's call it text, text rather. Why am I mis making a mistake? Okay, let's call it text. So, I have the text set to fill container, and then I'm can now create another, um, what's it called, another series of text. But this one I'm not going to like have to. I'm actually going to have like, uh, what's it called? Have a, you know what? Let me do that. Do it outside. Have so I'm going to create a, um, what's it called? A frame. Make it 64 by 64. So this frame is going to be 64 by 64. And uh, I'm going to do, like round the corners totally. Just like put one or two just in the corner radius. Just to make it like a full circle, and then I'm going to open my uh, what's it called? I uh, layers in my plugin panel, and then search for Lucid. So I normally use Lucid icon a lot. So you can use any icon you want. So I want to add that arrow, that arrow icon. So I'm going to add arrow, arrow. Okay. So I'm going to search for that one that's pointing to the top right, I think. Yeah. So once I have that added, I want to also click inside of it and then search the what's it called the with the weight of the stroke to one and i like that you have that done so drag inside of the frame and then <coughs> do i want to turn it to auto layout i don't think i want to auto layout this one for good reason so i want to just centralize this text inside of it centralize the text inside of it centralize line center line vertical center line horizontal center so good and fine so now i want to still do another unique thing here and i want to create a and i want to still okay let me call this one um what, what should i call it let me call it um uh icon icon okay i want to now this icon i want to give this a stroke i want to give it a stroke so add a stroke to it and that's good and fine that's well and good um the next thing i want to do is to create another create like duplicate it but then i want to cut this one and paste inside of this one again you're going to see why because if you notice like when i hover over this thing you see like there's a there's this black one that comes from nowhere and then just enters. so that's what i'm trying to like do here for good reason so you can see i have duplicated it and then Ctrl X to cut it, 
and then I'll now click, I can click inside of, and paste inside of the design. So it's inside of this, it's, it's an icon inside of this icon. It's an icon inside of, the, inside of this um, icon, so I'm just going to move it here. So you can see icon is a layer here, and then it has an icon inside of it. So let me call this one big icon, or out icon, outside icon, icon, and then let me call this one inside icon. Okay, inside icon. So inside icon, let me make the fill red so you can see the difference. And then the, the I'm going to make this the, the arrow make the change the color to white. So inside icon has a red and it has a red background and a white. So you can see what I mean by inside the outside inside icon and outside icon. So the outside icon, take note the clipping mask is turned on for the for the uh, what's it called for the um, frame. So you can see if I turn off clipping mask, you're going to see it. You can see that it's actually hiding somewhere underneath then it so that's what i'm trying to do so i want to for the outside icon i want to be different so i want to i'm going to do should i do here no not, not here not here not here not now okay so i'm going to once i have this like this i'm going to turn the color to black let me turn to black Let's turn to zero yeah so that's what i want to that's the inside icon so i'm going to create another version of it and then in this version of it uh i first of all okay i want to um on my keyboard i want to move this uh, what's it called this outside icon let me turn off my clip icon so you can see what i'm doing i want to move this inside icon i want to move it diagonally but diag like that like that di diagonally downwards but then to do that to do that I just hold you can hold them um, on figma figma allows you to like hold them um, two arrow keys on your keyboard together like if you hold like down and down and um, left together it's going to move diagonally so you can see it's moving diagonally like this so figma actually allows you to move um, items diagonally so it's a bit wonky but i'm going to just go back to First is, and then I'm going to actually like hold shift to do to like to move in um, in jumps. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So once it's outside the frame, good and fine. I can now still maybe just move it closer a little, a little, just so it doesn't take time. So that's basically to come outside. So that's basically what I'm trying to do here. Now I can turn click, go to my outside icon and then turn on clip content. So it's outside now. It's actually outside, but then you could see it because I turned on, turned on clip um, content. So turn it on. So it's outside and. I'll just leave this like this. So I'm going to start um, creating my um, way. I'm going to place it for the inside of this um, um, design. So I'm going to just duplicate this inside of this section. I'm going to duplicate the section, and then I'm going to here. I'm going to just um, I'm going to align. I'm going to select the options, and then press align left, align right rather, align right, so that the elements are actually aligned. But you can't see any change here because it's actually two of them. So I just I can just delete one of them, delete one of them. I don't really need, and then I can select this alpha icon. And then come into this group here. Let me call it. Let me call it icon, icon frame. I think I can actually do this easy, the easier way. But then it's totally out. It's not really. There's really no one size fits all. So I'm going to paste the icon side of the group. So you can see that the icon is inside of the what's it called icon frame. So I can now delete this. I can easily delete this what's it called. Delete this text. So you can see that it's uh, because I aligned it left, right, rather the icons are on the on the on the on the right rather. If I, can, if I want to do align left, I can do align left or align center or align whichever I want to align. But then align is what I want to do. That's why I am choosing this particular effect. So with that out of the way, I can now do other stuff, which is which is now set up the components properly. So like this, what I want to do is to is to I think I want to have the hmm, I think I want to have which one now? Which one I want to do? I want to have this one as fill container. Do I want to have it as fill container? I don't think I want to have it as full container. Mm. Tricky question. So sometimes having knowing knowing which you want to set up fill container might be actually problem. So what I want to do is actually click on this um, text and then set it to align bottom because the text the layer is going to be um, what's it called the, the um, this layer height is going to be dynamic. So I want to set it to align bottom so that in any point in time it's always aligned to the bottom. And then I want to um, what do you call it? I want to set the height to to um, what's it called? Fill container, yeah. I want to the height fill container, and then I want to turn like remove the spacing in between them. Okay, so this thing is filling the container. This, the height of this thing is filling the container, but the container are aligned to the bottom of the frame. So that's what I want to do. So once I have this, this setup, I want to create a duplicate of it. And this duplicate, I want to now copy this outside icon, this second outside icon. I want to copy it, which is uh, what's it called. The, this icon happens when you hover, like select over. So what I want to do here is actually. Change the last thing I want to do here is to uh, rotate the icon. 
90 minus 90 degrees so it's pointing down the arrow is pointing down here you can actually like see some motion is going on so i'm going to copy the outside icon and then i'm going to like paste to replace to paste to replace figma has changed the option so it's now control shift arrow so i just selected that old icon control shift arrow and then it's, it's just replaced them the you replace them the um this portion of this icon with this one so that's what i want to do so like this you actually have this entire thing set up the last thing i want okay yeah so what you want to do now is to select both of them and then create a component group out of it so go to components and then create a component set so here you're going to call it so i just call it two you can call it anything you can call it over let's call it over so yeah just to make you have a different this is default this is over so once this is set up you can now set up a multi called the prototype so the prototype is that once you hover over this area Okay, just like drag the arrow here and then set it to on while hovering that's 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 all that's all the process you actually need okay yeah i forgot sorry <laughs> you actually need to set smart animate as well so smart animate you will change the option to ease out and then the what's it called time duration so let's do 400 i think 400 works just fine so 400 so that's what you want to do and like this you have your component um, set up the last thing i think i want to still do is to make the text very very nice. okay yeah this text i forgot that one so you can see that once i hover over them you see this text actually like change the, it moves up a bit so i want to actually set up that set that thing up i forgot to do that before i created a component but good and fine so what i want to do to do that is just to select the text this um, what's it called title text and then frame it i want to frame it frame selection and then i want to clip content on the frame select on the selection i'm framing I want to clip content so that anything that goes outside of the frame is hidden so you can see what i mean so if i Click on the, on the on the let me call it title frame title frame so i am not having messy layer so title frame so line it so basically on the title frame the click on is turned on so if it's turned on it means that anything that goes outside of the title frame will be invisible if i were to go back and unclick content you're going to see that okay it's actually showing there's some part of it outside so that's what i want to do for the title frame so in title frame as well i want to now i'm intentionally making it like a Frame. I'm not making an auto layout group because I don't want to like have to deal with auto layout, auto layout uh, constraints and everything. So I want to duplicate the text here. If I duplicate the text, if I duplicate the text, what I want to do is to add a components prop. So components props are basically something you can use to easily ed edit your components whenever you need to edit it. So I want to, <coughs> sorry, I want to click on on title here and then press this. Um, go to this section here. It's you can only set up component props and of a component. So you can go to the title here and then see where it, there's a text written, and then you see this um, icon. So press create text property. So just press press the icon and then set it to. You can give it any name. Let's just call it um, what's it called name. Uh, let's call it um, header. Header create property and then for the body text you're going to do the same as well. But the body text we don't really need to do any fancy stuff. So the body text I only need to set it here and then call it create property. And then set to create a new property called body and that's basically <coughs> it so for the hero tech what i want to do as well is i want to duplicate this text inside of the this text that's inside of the title frame i want to duplicate it so i want to create duplicate it one two so that's three of them that's there so if you can see <coughs> let me turn off clip content so you can see so if i select them uh select the one that's at the top okay so you can see that they're actually three so what I'm doing is I want to like just stack the three of them, like stack them like vertically. So um, I'm going to move like the first, the, two, the I'm, I'm moving, to, I'm moving two out of view. You can see two. Okay, I think I also want to remove the. Uh, oh boy, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, no, I also want to. Um, I I have two selected. I've moved two out of frame. So this is the frame inside of you. I'm only um, you can only see them because the clip content is turned off. But if I turn on clip content, you can you can't see them again. They are hidden outside of the frame. So I can select the remaining two. Can select one and then move that one like what's it called move it away from this um other one and set it to like let's see move it four pixels away from this other one so you have three texts you have three texts that are stacked let me turn off clip content for all of them so we can see so you can see all these three texts are stacked like what's it called vertically and they are four four pixels away from four four pixels away from each other and they are all inside of the title frame that's constrained to the dimension of just one text the height is constrained to the dimension of just one. If I turn off, clip, clip, if I turn on clip content now, you can't see the other ones, and that's basically all the magic you, you have to do for this one. So once you, I want to just, I don't want to have to do the same thing here. So I just want to just copy this particular element and paste it here in this design. So Control C it and click on it, click on this uh, title, and then Control Shift Arrow. 
to replace. So I've replaced it with that other one. So if I press click on it, you can see that it has this other one. But then what I want to do here, since this is the hover state, what I want to do here is to select all the three texts and then move. Okay, what I want to do so you can see it. Uh, let me turn on a, let me add a fill for the, what's it called, for the title frame, red. Okay. <clears throat> so I select all the text out of the red area and then move the text up so that the last one is what you now see inside of the text and area. So all these, all, also that two will be outside of it. Here, they were, it's basically just like, it's just simple stuff. It's really sim simple stuff. So here, they were at the bottom, but here they are like, at, like the, the position just changed. So that's basically what I'm trying to, like try to do achieve here. So here now I have done that and I can just click on the layer and then turn up clip content again to clip the content and then Clip content is very important. If you don't turn on clip content, clip content in both uh, scenarios, it's going to like have a very wonky effect. So you don't want to have that. So I want to then turn off the what's it called? Turn off the uh, red thing. And that's basically my company. Like I'm done. I I can just pack up and actually start going home because the design is actually done and I'm, I can wrap up. So what I'm just doing, I just copy this, copy these components here, copy it here, Ctrl C, and then paste it. Okay, I think I want to also like give it a yeah padding. I didn't I didn't touch padding. So. The padding around the component, uh, uh, the padding inside of the area is just going to be 32, 32, 32, 32 everywhere. So 32, just set 32 to the vertical padding, 32 for the horizontal padding. Just so there's the, that's 32, I just choose to go for 32. So that's just basically like control C, this one, and then paste it here. Okay, paste to replace. So control shift, I'm using, I'm using to replace this layer. So you can see that because I've set, set the, what's it called, the components here to fill, okay, I've set it to fill. It is just feeling, it's just taking, like, feeling, even though here it's more, actually small, it's small here. Here it's actually taking the available space because the component is set to fill, so it's filling the available space. So I want to duplicate this component twice, twice really. I want to say duplicate it twice. And then I want to start the editing to have the same edits like I did for, okay, before I even do that, let me go back, to, let me restore this one. Okay, so restore them. Okay, so you have three components that are both, they are, what's it called, they are stretching to fill. So the last thing I want to do is also like add a stroke. So I can come to the components. I don't want to uh, tamper with anything here. I want to come to the component section and add a stroke to the right hand side. So right, come to, click on, the, select both components and then um, press stroke and press align, select select the, the right stroke. So it's, you can see that here, the effect has actually taken uh, place. It's uh, what's it called, having a stroke on the right hand side. So that's basically what we're trying to do. So the last thing you must do is just to, these components, all of them are, are set to, Fill, if you can see, you see here, the width is set to fill, fill, fill. So this last one, I want it to actually be fixed. I want to set the height, width to fix. And I want, the width, I want it to be a square. So I'm going to look at the height. The height is 270. I'm going to set the width, height of the, the width of the frame to 270 as well. So 270 for the width. 270. Okay. So it is square. Because this one is like a relevant, um, what's it called, more irrelevant um, uh, uh, card, so I don't want to really take much space. So I'm going to just so now what I'm almost, what I can start doing is just editing the content. So to edit the content, because I set up component props already, I can just click on any of them, and then you come to this section. You see, you see that it has component props for the header and for the body. So, so I can change the header here, and the theory text that the theory text are in the header there. It's just going to change. So I can just change the header to uh, what's it called about you no know, change to to what's it called my work. I'm using all caps because it just fits it down. All caps fits down. My work. Okay. So you can see everything here has changed to my website. So I'll un ungroup it now. Oh, um, sorry. You're going to see everything is oh my I didn't have to like start changing everything one by one. That's the power of what's it called. That's the power of working with the component process. And even for the body, I can just go and copy like one body here. Just copy one body from here, from one of my stuff. Yeah, you can use anybody. I use Lorem Ipsum a lot. I don't really care about people saying you don't use Lorem Ipsum. I use Lorem Ipsum a lot. So. I just copy paste the remission in that body section here and then just just going to like change here. Although I think I want it as a what's it called? As a a yeah, I want it as a more what's it called? As a more uh sentence case text. So another thing I want to just just change the color, the color here so that's why everything change I'm making to the components, I'm making on the on the components level. So I, I don't touch on this stuff. I only touch on this stuff when I need to like make it particular So I want to change the color of all the Body text. I just come here, select the body text, and then change the color down to just to like give you more high. This is a hierarchy. This is a lesson in, in hierarchy. Here I'm trying to like do lesson in hierarchy. So yeah, um, change the body text to like a darker color just to like add more visual hierarchy. Let's do 8A, 8A for the body text. 8A. Okay. 
So you can see here it has been changed that the body text has been changed to like a darker color. So that's basically all you need. So here now I can come here, change the hero text, the header text to um about me. About me. So the title text I'm trying to like make it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the body text I change to uh let's change to let's paste that thing, we'll just copy it. Dog pal, what 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 not. So here contact. This is contact. Because contact doesn't really have much context to it. Contact. Okay. And I just change the text to let's say something something short asha. I don't want to have it. Maybe my email. My email. Uh, yeah, I think this particular one could actually be unique. It could be unique. So email. Um uh, let's change it to Eden Eden Ross at Gmail dot com. Like so yeah, this one doesn't like have to be like take it to a multi call. All this other ones take you on to another paper. Contact you can just copy like contact message. Just copy, just copy the contact test. So here, what I want to do is I want to set up a component. I could have set up a component prop, but it wasn't. I want to actually change this icon here to copy instead. Sorry, to copy instead of uh, uh, this one. A pointer because this one is meant to like take it on a paper. But then in your own design, you can actually change it. You can change it to what's it called? Copy. That's good and fine. Although since it's a component, you have to like think component wise. So that's a challenge for you to work on. So that's that really that's 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 that that's really that so once you go to our design you can see that once i hover oh my oh my goodness <laughs> okay yeah the challenge is that in the i've not changed the like i've not made the change on the what's it called in the um in the what do you call it again in the second state i've not made the change in second state that's why it's acting like uh, this so what i must do what i must do is that here i can just come to this uh, multiple copy I can come to this section here. I've not added like a component prop here. So I can just come to this section here and select um, the component prop and select body for the component prop. And it has applied the same component prop here on this body to this body here. So I think it should work. I think, like God's grace, it should work now. Yeah, so you can see it works. It doesn't like have that messy uh, action. Yeah, however, the challenge I'm currently having is that you can see that this icon, this icon like flies with, this icon does not, like I actually want this icon to be stationary. I want it to be stationary here and I just want it to turn. So that's one thing challenge I'm having. So to, to fix that, you see how I'll fix that now. So to fix that, what I must do is to come here. So this um, as the component, this component again. Come here and then turn off click content. And then I want to select the component, the what's it called? Select the icon, which is the in um, arrow icon, and select the other arrow icon as well. And then I'm going to align what's it called? Align top, align uh, left. So you can't see this company. You can't you can't see the icon that's inside of this thing because it's currently in the same position as this other I am what's it called, as this other icon, and that's basically the idea. So it should work now. It should work because I've set it on the component level. The only thing I want to do is select the what's it called, select the icon frame, and then turn on clip content, and that's basically it. So let's go back to the design, and it should work. So you can see that like one that icon no longer flies out of interview. Yeah, it's just there, and this is a what's it called black thing just comes through like this. So that's basically everything you need to know about this thing although the small tiny issue i have is that because the text is like what's it called um very um slanty uh the cropping the, it's cropping to where there's this red crop on the text but basically you can fix that by just coming to the um to this layer section and just like maybe moving the text title a bit forward just to give it more breathing um, space but that's that that's a small thing compared to the grand scheme of that's actually really, really small so that's basically everything you need to do so once you you can still this my own had like an extra Bell and whistles of once you hover over this thing, like it shows an image. But this thing is a challenge for you to actually like pick up and actually from all we've done, you can pick up this challenge and basically just add a creative component of this section where once you hover over it, like an image shows it's very, very easy to do. And the rest of things are just like basic, basic um, stuff. So that's everything, really. That's everything. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now. Otherwise, we are done with this particular session and we can all go home now. But if you have, have questions, feel free to ask. Jephta, you had a question there, so feel free to ask now. Um, no, I think uh, when I um, actually raised my hand the first time, it was an error, so oh. I'm sorry. Okay, Wait. cool. So let me, before we go, let me drop this file in the chat so we can all have access to it and like go through it in detail. Because me personally, that's actually how I like, deconstruct people's files and then I like sometimes I get the idea behind it. Although you might want to stick to the main, main section because, okay. So let me drop the file in the chat. We have access to it. Yeah. So one second. While it's coming up. Oh boy. 
I think I think it's been structured. So let me let me copy for let me copy for you. So copy share file. Okay. So let me drop in the chat. And boom, you can have access. Just try to just open it so you can. So because if the call ends, you probably not have the file again. So try to open it so you can have it. But that's basically everything. If you have any questions, ask. Otherwise, we're done and we can all go. That's all. Okay. In the absence of no questions, I assume that we're done and um, can all go. Thank you all for coming. I I know we stayed like more than usual today, but I, I really had to finish this thing because especially because like I we didn't have like a session last week, so I want to use. This opportunity like make up for the last one so yeah that's all that's all really feel free to go to the file and feel free to like recreate in your own style and everything and if you have any questions you can go ahead and ask like reach out to me on twitter or, or anywhere really or linkedin or anywhere you can even call me if you want and i will answer and be, be, know how to like help you out with your problem so that's basically all thank you for coming and i will see you guys again next week all right